All right. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us um, in the last of our high school counselor webinar series. Um, today we're going to talk about the Great Salt Lake Institute here at Westminster. Um, so to just get us started, um, why don't we have our panelists introduce themselves? So um, let's go ahead and start with Bonnie. Oh, hi, I'm Dr. Bonnie Baxter and I'm a professor of biology and I direct Great Salt Lake Institute. So I teach things like genetics and astrobiology, which will become clear in a little while why that is. Um, and I uh, have loved developing the programs around Great Salt Lake Institute that we're going to talk about today. Hi there. My name is Jamie Butler. I'm a wildlife biologist and I am the coordinator of Great Salt Lake Institute. Um, I really love to connect students to our Salty Lake and um, I do that through um, connecting to our partners that are doing research or land management um, or just take fun field trips and help them with their, their field work. Hi, my name is Kayla. I'm a current undergraduate student at Westminster. Um, my major is biology and I've been conducting research at the Rosa Point Tar Seeps, which is right along the shoreline, shoreline of Great Salt Lake um, for the past two years and it's been awesome. Awesome, thank you everybody. Um, so just a little bit about the Great Salt Lake Institute. Um, it's a way to connect people to the Great Salt Lake through research and education. And what started as a running community field trips and developing a curriculum about the Great Salt Lake turned into the formation of a summer undergraduate research program. Um, so just a note to all of our attendees here, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the chat and we will go ahead and have a Q&A at the end of the presentation. So to kick us off today, um, Kayla, if you could share your overall experience with the Great Salt Lake Institute and your research and field work and everything. Yes. Um, is Jamie, would you like to share a video of my research partner, Mary Sanchez, to kick us off? Sure, yes. So Mary just graduated this past year um, and they were working together in the field. Hi, my name is Mary Sanchez and I am Utah NASA Space Grant. With this grant and through the Great Salt Lake Institute, I get to combine my love of lab and field work to contribute to the research of the Great Salt Lake, whose hypersaline ecology has the potential to help find life on Mars. This summer, I started studying the Roselle tar seeps, which are petroleum deposits located on the north arm of the lake. My team and I set up field cameras to monitor animal entrapments and deaths of the seeps to document the preservation of, of these animals. Also, as an undergraduate student, I have been given the opportunity to dive deeper into this project and to start looking into the microbial life that lives in and around the deposits to get a better understanding of this unique environment. Overall, Utah Space Grant has helped me discover my passion for research, and I'm grateful for the opportunities it has given me and the future in science it has helped me to set up. I, I want to just say a shout out to um, Mary had a NASA grant uh, to study the tar seeps that year. And so that's why that video was produced as gratitude to NASA for funding her work. Um, while my presentation is loading, um, I'll just give a little bit of background about um, Mary and I. We started working together at this project um, about in, in 2019, and we were just completely obsessed with the with the tar seeps. Um, it started off by us going there and monitoring cameras, which I'll I'll show shortly. Um, and from there, it just took off. There was something new every single time we went out to the seeps. It was weird and wonderful. Um, and 
for some reason, my share screen is not working. I can fill in a little gaps here. Um, we do have a summer undergraduate research program um, that helps fund students to do research on Great Salt Lake and the greater watershed. So GSLI is in part summer research, but in part some programming that takes place during the academic year as well. Um, we, we have students working as interns, as undergraduate researchers. We have communication students that run our office uh, outreach stuff. We have education students. We've had business students work with us. Um, so we like to think that we're all the way across campus. The only the only department on campus that we haven't worked with is is nursing. So everybody else, um, we've had a really hard time. Um, why don't we play our presentation, Jamie, while we're trying to figure out Kayla's, and then Kayla. Um, maybe you can email. Um, I think you were going to email that maybe and then Jamie could show it. Um, go ahead, Jamie. Do you want to talk about the Institute? Yeah, so, you know, all of these wonderful students that you're um, seeing, Kayla and Mary, um, are really the backbone of Great Salt Lake Institute. Um, we um, are sitting on the shores of this wonderful lake that you can see from space. And when you look at Westminster College, Westminster College is located essentially right on the shores of this um, lake of hemispheric importance, both for birds and for people. And so for us, this was an opportunity um, and, and the lake is very misunderstood. If you talk to locals, um, a lot of locals will say, oh, it's gross, it's buggy, it's, you know, smelly. Um, and, and it is those things. <laughs> it does have those qualities, um, but, but uh, it is a very important place. Um, and, and you might wonder, like, why would you want to concentrate on just this one place? I know it's big, but the, the watershed, all of the watershed um, in the surrounding 200, or, sorry, 22,000 square miles that extends over state boundaries, it drains into Great Salt Lake. And because Great Salt Lake is a terminal basin, there's no outlet. Everything stays there um, except for the water that leaves through evaporation. And this place is, um, like I said, very hemispherically important. And while a lot of people call it stagnant because it's closed, it's actually this wonderful place of um, transformation and energy movement of birds and resources. Um, I actually started working at Great Salt Lake um, in thinking about these little brine shrimp. You might know them as sea monkeys. Um, this is um, one of the young people that, that we did some outreach with. You know, our students are behind her helping them collect brine shrimp. But really my obsession and um, a lot of the focus of Great Salt Lake Institute um, and one of our premier projects is our Pelly project. Um, so the Great Salt Lake is host to one of the world's largest populations of American white pelicans and we're involved with the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources that helps manage their populations and um, other researchers through the Division of Wildlife. This is Allie Nelson, one of our students. She's going to get a medical. She was going to go to med school, and she decided that she really liked um, hanging out with pelicans and biologists, and actually dropped her med school to pursue field biology, which is a fun thing to see this transformation happen when a student doesn't know maybe all of the options for what they have um, in their career and to, to see a passion evolve through some projects is really cool. Claire Prasad, 
Um, we started this Pelly project with Claire Prasad um, in 2016 and 2017. And now this project, this Pelly project, the Pro partnership in education and longitudinal investigation of American white pelicans um, has gotten a, um, a lot of attention both for our lake and given our students endless projects. I have endless projects to work on. We work with lots of partners and have a live camera. We put motion activated cameras on this island and um, you can see in um, picture A, our, we, our students found that pelicans have dance parties on Gunnison Island. Um, in, in picture B, they have, uh, they like to take cell Selfies. Um, we're in Utah and we can't talk about what the birds in picture C are doing, but they eventually have eggs like in picture D and enjoy sunsets on the beach. Um, and sometimes they even fight in picture F. These are all pictures that our students have looked through and found these amazing behaviors that have never been documented before, including coyotes that have crossed a land bridge onto this very sensitive island because of water diversions and climate change. And so the future of our lake, um, our students are on the forefront of our lake right now and, and learning about what is happening um, with, with our current actions. We actually have a citizen science project that our, our students manage also. It's on Zooniverse where people, members of the public, high school students, anybody can go in and manage. Uh, they can help us analyze images. One of the most important things too is um, in this project are computer science students. So these aren't just environmental studies students or biology students, they're students really in all disciplines that are helping us. And um, eventually, Kara Kornhauser is one of the students that started the Roselle Tar Seeds project that we showed you with Mary Sanchez. Um, we, um, this year we edited, Bonnie and I co-edited a book called Great Salt Lake Biology, A Terminal Lake in a Time of Change. This book has a number of student authors, including Kara that was an undergraduate and is a primary author on her chapter um, along with uh, many others. So I want to show you this video. This is from the field this January. Our students are collecting samples in underneath the ice. And I'll let you talk, Bonnie, about the rest of this. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, yeah, this is a group of students that have been spending a year doing seasonal sampling to understand photosynthesis in Great Salt Lake. And so we couldn't skip out on the winter season. Um, and it turned out that the Bernie memes happened that weekend. And so we started, uh, we, we had a, a Bernie meme that came up as well. Um, so uh, we're getting ready to go out again this this weekend and Jamie and I are gonna camp with these students because they'll be graduating and we wanna have a nice um, ending to this big project they've been doing this last year. And Kayla's been uh, coming along even though this isn't her project because she loves the field so much. So it's very often that we, we explore a research subject with not just our students, but we bring in researchers from elsewhere or state agency people, and um, the students really get to know um, what it is like to be in a research community. Um, it's really fun because we have Great Salt Lake Institute, we can bring in a pot of funding that funds big projects like this. So that's part of what we do. Um, I might say that uh, we've also, again, I'll say we've worked across disciplines. This is the result of a grant we had um, to have science and art students work together. So this, this art exhibit is now on display at the Utah Museum of Fine Arts, uh, but two of our undergraduate researchers built these microbial columns from different parts of Great Salt Lake um, in order to investigate what different microbes might grow in different conditions. So now um, they were science and now they're art. Um, and if we had not had this cool funding at Great Salt Lake Institute to make 
art and science work together, uh, this never would have happened. So that's the kind of thing that happens um, when you go beyond the classroom at Westminster, which is really awesome. Um, so this pink water, I don't know, when Jamie showed the space shot, if you noticed half of Great Salt Lake is pink. Um, this is a student of mine a few years back because now she's a physician's assistant at the Huntsman Cancer Institute. Um, she was doing a project on salt crystals in this pink water, and so she's using a shovel to harvest the salt crystals. We, we discovered that microorganisms that color the, this hypersaline water pink dry up inside salt crystals and can stay there over geologic time. And that's really important because um, this connects us to Mars. Um, Jamie's got a slide in here later and I'll explain why that is. So Great Salt Lake is like Mars. Just hang on to that for a minute. Um, the other thing I wanna say that you're gonna be hearing a lot about from Westminster is uh, there are a couple of bullet points that are part of our strategic initiatives going forward. So in the fall um, round of admissions, you're going to hear a lot from Westminster about um, a signature experience that we'd like to offer to all students. And a piece of that signature experience could be undergraduate research, or it could be an internship with a company, um, or it could be a service learning experience. So we're, we're going to start offering all students a signature experience during their time here. And Great Salt Lake Institute has pioneered a lot of this with our undergraduate research. The second thing that you're going to hear a lot about Westminster is that we are going to really underscore uh, place-based initiatives as well as, as a signature of Westminster. So that that is um, no more obvious than a student playing in the salt evaporative ponds near our campus. So um, I love that. Do you want to switch the slide, Jamie? There's some of our beautiful salt crystals. And the, these are the microbes that we grow out of them. Um, and I, I'll just, if you want to go forward to the perseverance slide, because I know I want to turn this over to Kayla. There's some of our pink microbes. We even use them in art. Um, we, we've had so much fun with science and art that we've started um, uh, microbial painting nights, uh, which is kind of fun. Um, that is one of our students, JD, who was a musician. He graduated as a biology and musician uh, major, and he was on his way to play his senior concert that night, but he had to stop by the lab to check his samples. So I love that because it shows how, how multifaceted our students are. So here are some of the minerals on Mars on the right and the same minerals at Great Salt Lake on the left in these veins. So the gypsum and salt can hold on to microbes over time. And if you go to the next slide, um, I think that's the one you had perseverance. The new rover that has landed on Mars um, is perseverance and it's gonna be looking at these minerals on Mars and looking for the potential of life. So that's what we've been studying on the shores of Great Salt Lake. And that's why we collaborate with NASA JPL um, who are particularly uh, um, providing science for this NASA mission. So I really want to turn this back over to Kayla, but if anybody has questions about undergraduate research and how you go from pelicans to Mars, um, that's that's really the elaborate nature of what we do. We have a lot of different faculty and different collaborators that help mentor projects. Um, so no one faculty member has all of that expertise. Okay, so here comes here comes Kayla. I got it. Oh, yay! <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I think the best way to share my experience is through a bit of a story of of how I um of how I uh, started conducting research at this really weird and wonderful place. Um, I was a freshman and I knew I was going to spend my summer here. I'm an international student from South Africa. And I basically just wanted to get a hands on experience with anything research centered. And so Jamie took me in and was like, hey, there's this really cool place out by Great Salt Lake. Would you like to go and check it out and see if you want to do research? And I was like, 
that would be great. She's um, Jamie's like, oh, it's tar seeps. And I was like, what is a tar seep? That is the weirdest concept. Um, and so basically, um, Jamie, are you share? Are you on the presentation? Yeah, just tell me when to move it and I'll move it. Oh, you only see white. <laughs> I only see white. Oh. I saw it when you put it up there, but there then. we go. Thank you. Hold on, let me do something really quick. And then I should be able to show you the whole thing. Go ahead, Kate. <sighs> tell your story. Tell your story. <laughs> so it's a two and a half hour drive from Westminster campus. Um, and you basically go through these meanders and you finally get to this like pink shore. Um, you can go, you can go next, please, Jamie. And one more time. And one more time. Thank you. <laughs> and so basically you walk out about, I would say like a kilometer and you finally you smell you smell the seeps before you actually see them it's this like combination of like asphalt and decay and the stinky water that jamie was talking about but then you finally you get to the seeps you can go next thanks jamie um and again one more time <laughs> thank you and it really feels like you're on a different planet. There's basically naturally occurring tar that oozes out from the um, from underneath the surface through cracks and fissures and pulls out onto the surface. And it, it forms in these really artistic ways. Um, and so um, you can go next. Thank you, Jamie. There we go. So this is one of the biggest seeps. Um, and I don't know if you agree with me, but it really, really is just something that I never thought I would be stuck and obsessed with being in America for like <laughs> my whole undergraduate experience. <laughs> but <laughs> basically, every couple of weeks, um, Mary Sanchez, who has graduated now and I, we would go out to these seeps. Um, and like I said previously, we would see something new every single day. So, um, the tar is very, very sticky, especially during the hot months and animals, particularly pelicans, will fly over and get entrapped. And so every time we would go, we would sometimes find um, new animals entrapped, other times not. And basically what we did was we had these um, motion activated cameras at each seep and we would just be monitoring and, we, and I still am monitoring um, the different entrapments over time and how temperature affects this and how season affects this. Um, and so, like I said, every time you go out, there's something new. Um, and so what started off as monitoring the entrapments has become trying to paint an, a picture of this unique and wonderful ecosystem. So not only pelicans have been entrapped, but we've also seen some coyote, a coyote that has been entrapped. Um, a little mouse that has been entrapped, which I'll speak about in a little bit, that has led to another research project. Um, and so here you can see it's how I find this, it, um, like it's art to me. You see the water mixing with the tar and it creates these really cool strands. Um, and also there's a lot of death in the seeps, but Mary Sanchez had this brilliant idea to investigate possible life in the seeps. So in the form of microbial diversity. And so basically what we've been doing is painting this um, more of a fuller picture about what kind of environment is the, seep, the are the seeps and what lives in the seeps, what dies in the seeps and how is this um, all connected. So what you can see here um, is what we call a volcano. So basically not only oil but gas also migrates through the surface and you have these like volcano mounds um, and they come in different shapes and sizes and what that what got 
what we got thinking about, actually it's a funny story, Mary and I were out at the seeps and suddenly we heard this like popping sound, this cracking sound and we paused and we were like, there's Mary in the background and we paused and we were like, what is that? That's so weird. And we discovered that there were these little, it, it was like the earth was burping um, some <laughs> form of gas. And that was like Mary um, said that she would just have dreams of this like sound of this like burping earth. And so that got us thinking, I started thinking about what is, um, you know, what kind of gases are getting emitted from the seeps and how does that impact the global greenhouse gas budget? And Mary started thinking, what else is creating the, um, the gas? Is it burping bacteria? Um, and so there's another volcano. And so you have this juxtaposition between life and death and it's been so amazing for me to be able to explore the seeps not only in, from a um, scientific standpoint but also from a creative standpoint finding new um, methods to try and um, sample the tar and process the tar which Mary did a lot of work on that um, also how to collect data effectively from the entrapment so we can come up with trained lines and um, some sort of conclusions why these animals are getting entrapped. So that's a pelican. What's also really cool about this is um, we're able to look at real time fossilization in a sense. So our sister tar pits, the La Brea tar pits in California are really, really old and have um, really old fossils. But these tar pits right here at Great Salt Lake are considered young. And so we're able to monitor the real life entrapment of these animals, how they're decaying and how they're being preserved over time, which is which is super cool. Um, and so I think overall, m my experience has just been eye opening. And it's, it's wild how this has tied into current situations like Bonnie was talking about with um, the Perseverance rover and how it really expands your horizons and, and broadens your mindset about how the, this is such a weird and wonderful and unique place. Um, and it really gets you thinking, you know, what else is out there? And it's just been, I've been very lucky to work with Great Salt Lake Institute and with all the generous donors and be able to run wild with um, my imagination. So thank you. It's wonderful, thanks. Mary's in the house. <laughs> There's your face. We can't hear you though. We can't hear you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Can there you, you are. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm the only one here today, so I think I can take it off. I'll just like put it on if anyone comes in. We did show your. Uh, we showed your NASA video and talked a little. I saw. About it. Yeah. Okay. I could. I could join as a attendee but like not a I don't know it was weird for a second I I actually want to ask Mary a question because Mary is super unique in that she was getting a finance degree and, <laughs> and I think it would be really cool for you to say a few words about that yeah um so I started off doing finance and pre-physical therapy because I always I was interested in science um and pre-physical ther or physical therapy was like my career of choice at first um I was always too scared to do like the biology major and then of course like sophomore year comes I'm like oh my god I really like biology way too expensive to change my major and stay another year I don't really want to pay tuition and so I kind of just decided I'd take control and be like well um, even if I can't take as many biology courses as I'd like to I can um, make that up and just be more involved in science and so that's when I started working for the Great Salt Lake Institute and I feel like um, I still like learned a lot that way. I got my, I was able to still um, learn a lot about biology um, and, you know, get that side of it. And now I'm working in the lab, so it worked out for me. <laughs> well, and I like that you have this business school background and then a biology minor, and then um, now you're working at a company that does biology. And so like actually that skill set of business and biology together is super helpful. Um, and I know you've talked about graduate school in your future, but you're really enjoying making a little money after college now, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> it is super nice. Yeah, and I think 
Um, Kayla beautifully described all of our projects that have been going on. Um, and overall that, um, all those experiences really are helping me in my job now. Um, I think like, um, like you said, how I was able to start that micro project, um, it really exposed me to a lot of different aspects of research. So instead of just going straight into the fun of like lab work and field work, I had to read a lot of research papers and see like how to write procedures and um, just going into the academic side, which is very helpful because now I know I can do that too and that'll be helpful in grad school. Um, and yeah, good, good experiences all around. Well, I so appreciate you taking time out of your work day to be with us, but that the perspective that we wanted to bring to the audience, um, which are high school guidance counselors, um, is is one that showcases a current student, Kayla, um, and then an alum who's been through our program. And I think uh, I think it's also kind of cool that you guys overlapped and worked together. But I, I do think you both illustrate some real beautiful concepts about um, what a, a co-curricular experience outside of the curriculum, outside of your classes can be. Um, and we find that students that engage in these co-curricular opportunities um, really, really excel um, and, and, and just are really driven to do cool things. And so um, I do want to mention that uh, part of the signature experience for Westminster students um, will be a fundraising drive to make sure that these positions are funded. And if you do summer research, you get paid. It's not just volunteer work. Um, this is really an important element so that all students are able to have these opportunities. Um, so I think that's awesome. And, you know, Kayla is an international student and that comes with some um, that that comes with some difficulties, like not seeing your family during a pandemic, for example, <laughs> having to stay here and figure that out. Um, Kayla um, was a first gen student, um, which I think is is actually super cool and guidance counselors need to know um, that Westminster can be a place for um, any students uh, and especially if they're not getting a lot of advice at home about um, college education from parents who experience that. Um, I think at Salt Institute, um, we provided a lot of opportunities for a lot of different students in a lot of different situations. And we, we love working with those challenges and find ways to fund students. Um, the only problem with Kayla is we couldn't allow her to drive the student vans because we couldn't get her driving records from South Africa. But I tell you what, we tried. We tried, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so I, I think when you're speaking to students, um, you need to know that Westminster is trying really hard to make these sorts of opportunities available to all students um, and they should be encouraged to apply. Awesome, thank you so much for that. Um, so um, I would just like to end this webinar by um, answering some questions that we got during the presentation. Um, so I see that um, Jamie's answered one of them, but just for um, anyone who is watching from home, um, the recorded version of this, can any of you talk more about how students of majors outside of biology have been involved in this research? Can, can I take that one? I was actually, I thought we had to leave right at 1130, and so I was typing madly. Um, okay, so we um, have students that are scientific illustrators that have illustrated a children's book for us. They've illustrated um, all of the, the kind of uh, illustrations in our academic biology book. Um, we work with computer science students to help us both analyze data and to help us um, with the Pelican project and managing the immense amount of 500,000 images and data that's coming out of that. We um, work with education students and pre-service teachers um, to, to help them understand how to teach science um, and, and, you know, we go into classrooms and with their students also. Um, we have had history students do research for us. 
um, when we've been writing papers on the history of pelicans or you know we always have students that are helping us to do the literature searches behind that um, what else mon can you think of We've I think we're, we're now looking for a public health student because we're having some dust storms coming from the shoreline and that plays into air quality in the valley and we want to make sure we get out ahead of any public health issues and so um, we have a wonderful school of public health and uh, we're talking to them now about potential students to work on projects like that. We're, we're also working through the our communication department. Um, we have a um, job opening for a, communi a science communication and storytelling student. So we're kind of reaching out into all aspects of Westminster. I also put a bunch of links if, if you're interested. I have a YouTube playlist with lots of student presentations that are 10 or 15 minutes long. Right, so the Great Salt Lake Institute YouTube channel at Westminster College. Um, also, um, we had an, a student uh, 3D printing brine shrimp to use uh, with teachers in the classroom. So uh, that student's a computer science student, but was working with the art faculty and the 3D printing lab. Amazing. Um, yeah, so it sounds like anyone um, outside of the biology major would be a huge contribution to the research, no matter what major you would be, and that's really awesome. Um, so to just end this, uh, the second question that we had um, come in was, if a student has never been involved with research before, what kind of support is there to help them get started? You students should take that. <laughs> <laughs> How did you find us? I have a I funny just, story. Yeah, you yeah. go. <laughs> you go, Kayla, and then we'll have um, <laughs> So, freshman, right off the bat, never been to America before. Weird mm -hmm. people. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I just had <laughs> my I've never been exposed to um, research, and I and I had no idea how to get involved. I didn't even know it existed. But all I knew is that I wanted to do it. <laughs> and so the great thing about Westminster is um, the fact that it is intimate and it's small. And so I just started asking all of my professors. I was like, what research do you do? Where can I go? What research do you do? Where can you go? Where can I go? And everybody was super, super helpful. And so I just started, um, there were a lot of announcements posted. I, that's a really great thing about Westminster is the communication. And so um, I came across Great Salt Lake institute online and I saw um, some of the projects that were being done with the pelicans and I just thought that was really really cool and so basically I just hopped from professor professor to professor to professor asking can I please get involved and then finally Jamie took me under her wing and Bonnie took me under her wing and just like threw me in the deep um, tarry depths of the Rosal Point tar seeps. And, it, and it's, it was not intimidating because the resources are just so great. There's, um, you know, mentors are really, really hands on. And throughout the summer, there's a research program where you meet up with other peers doing research, not just in biology, but it may be art, it may be computer science, it may be neuroscience, and you collaborate and there's this, um, this like really great program to help you excel and 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 help you to understand what it means to give a presentation or what it means to write a hypothesis or an ele elevator pitch and that was just um really really helpful and definitely got me addicted to research <laughs> sorry yeah, Mary. I had a similar experience i literally just i literally just um thought one day i want to do research um like i'll talk to jamie about it and i thought she was gonna and it was literally that easy. I just wanted to do this thing. I talked to Jamie and she was so open. Like Kayla said, it's not intimidating at the Great Silicon too, which I think is really important because I think the, one of the main things I've learned is that, like I always say like, oh, I'm really lucky to have all these resources, which I am, but I think it's also important to realize that every student deserves those resources and that help and like a welcoming environment. And, you know, um, as a, you know, being a brown woman stem first gen not always fun <laughs> but um <laughs> learning that 
just helps so much, like knowing that I deserve these resources, that every student deserves these resources. And yeah, definitely the environment is very welcoming. So that's kind of my advice, like just find an environment that you are able to like freely work in and just be yourself and yeah. Awesome. Well, Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Um, so yeah, it sounds like um, no matter how much experience you have, the Great Salt Lake Institute is open to everyone and it can be intimidating um, for sure, but you shouldn't be because um, everyone will give you the resources that you need um, and you will no doubt add on to your toolkit of resources, whether that's research or anything like that. Anyone has um, something to gain from the Great Salt Lake Institute. Um, so yeah, I just want to thank everybody for um, participating here today. Thank you to all of our attendees for um, taking your time to learn about the Great Salt Lake Institute and of course to all of our panelists today for um, providing information about your experience and um, all the knowledge that you've imparted on us today. And I hope everyone has a great day today. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.